I've gotten this question so many times. What do I do with my scraps? Let me show you what I do with my scraps. I put them in a bucket and then I don't really think about them. But today I wanted to challenge myself to make something out of these scraps. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, I'm also putting myself on a time limit for this. I'm gonna try to do this in under an hour. So, I've already kind of started picking through some of the colors. Obviously I have a lot here, so there's no way I'm like using a significant amount, but I kind of started pulling out some of the greens, like I'm, I'm liking these colors. And we're gonna keep this like really earthy. Um, I've seen a lot of scrap weavings lately, mainly done with just a simple Raya knot. So it's like basically a fringe weaving. So I think that's what I'm going to attempt today. We'll see if I have any other inspirations, but again, I really just wanted to try to keep this um, quick and efficient and see what I can come up with um, with those parameters. Cause sometimes it is like a fun challenge to give yourself a time limit. So I'm gonna continue picking through some of these scraps and then we'll get started. Okay, I have a warp on my loom. I wove in my cardstock, twining stitch, a few rows of plain weave, and now I'm just ready to get started. So, as I said, I don't really have a plan for this. So, I'm gonna just start going. And I actually had a thought. Instead of doing what I've seen so many times before, which is the Raya knot, and a very shaggy weaving, which is awesome. I just had the thought of like, what would it look like if I just did plain weave, but like am doing all these different colors. So the unfortunate thing is these are so short that I think I'm going to have to um, weave them in by hand. But I just kind of thought, what would it, what would it look like? And what if we keep the edges shaggy instead of the middle? So I'm gonna try that. Though I'm realizing right now that I probably should do some kind of fringe because I'm gonna want to cover this up. So, hmm. What if I did a mixture of fringe and that plain weave idea? So let's see what we can do here. I kind of want to like, again, I'm putting myself on a time limit for this because I just kind of wanted to see like, could I do it? You know, sometimes a time limit can really force you to just make decisions quickly and not just second guess everything that you're doing which can be a really fun exercise. Will it turn out? Time will tell. Um, but it's, it's one of those things. It's kind of like a little bit of a challenge where instead of giving yourself all the time in the world to make it perfect, it's a little bit more freestyle and crunch time. So I kind of decided this one was too short and I don't want it to end up so random that you're just like, what am I even looking at? So I'm kind of pulling some out and trying to repeat the colors a little bit so that it feels a little more cohesive. I definitely like this combination of colors. So that's good. And now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to go with this. So now 
I'm feeling like these are a little bit short, so I think I'm gonna remove those and do something longer. So if I can find, you know, and this is where it is gonna get a little tricky because there's only so much to work with and I'm putting in this effort to not go grab new materials and try to only use scraps. Um, so that's gonna be a little bit challenging with, especially with a fringe that I want a particular length. So let's grab some of these. Put those on the end. So now I know I have like a decent amount of this. So I think I'm gonna put one here and put another one over here. Just turn that off a little shorter. See, and now I'm like, do I do it in like a particular order maybe? Put this over here. This is gonna be challenging <laughs> to uh, stay within the time frame I wanna stay in. I can tell you that much now. So now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put these in an actual order. Cause I think we, we do wanna bring some order to the chaos that is using so many different materials right now. Thankfully I have more long pieces of this. Okay. I'm really liking these colors together for sure. So now I think maybe I need to do one more layer of fringe and I think this one can probably get away with being a little bit shorter. And we'll try to stagger those colors. So I'm gonna do around these two. So I managed to get a little bit of fringe going on here. And I think like, obviously later, I'm probably gonna have to like trim this up. But here are my thoughts. I am going to just try weaving in these little sections and leaving them sticking out on the end. So what this is also gonna mean is potentially not tucking in any ends, which is also really appealing. So it's gonna be a bit of a shaggier piece, but I just wanna see, like, does this work? What will that look like? So we are gonna have sort of these um, sections that will be sticking out like that. Now, because I know I don't have a ton of this, but I do have this, which is a very similar color. So that might work. And I'm definitely gonna want to weave this fairly tight just because we don't want any of the ends coming out. So I'm gonna be weaving it in pretty, pretty tight. Kinda already have that color in. Um, what color are we missing? Some of this. So I'm gonna have to trim up the ends as I go. This one I think I'm gonna just leave for now and then like trim it off later. And I might have to bring in sort of like some other colors potentially because I think I'm going to run out of the main colors. So maybe I can bring in some of this, this cotton frizz ribbon. And then maybe I wanna like just do one row of that for now. And the other color I was thinking of bringing in, that's a little bit bright, but I have this more, slightly more blushy kind of peachy pink. And I think that one will 
tie in nicely with the other colors that are going on. Now, obviously you could totally go completely random with this if that's kind of like the look that you like. I wanted to kind of keep it somewhat cohesive because otherwise like, I just like my color palettes to be cohesive. So that's just what I'm doing. I'm gonna try to end this one more out in the middle again because I do want to get some like sort of these little fluffs out in the middle too. That one I cut a little short so I'm gonna bring it further back. Maybe we'll bring in some more of this color. But we also have this green. And I think that green will definitely work. Oh, you guys, I don't know if I can finish this in 15, I think I have about 15 minutes left. Actually, no. We'll say I have about 20 minutes left. Um, I feel like it's maybe getting a little faster, but I can say that I am liking how, I'm liking the randomness of this. This is really hard, like doing something super random is actually hard, I feel like, for our brains because it's like we want to start bringing in some sort of order. But what I can tell you about what I'm doing here with this challenge is that because I only have pieces that are a certain length and I only have so many of specific colors and all of those different elements, it is causing a randomness that I don't think I could just like repeat easily because again, it would just be so easy to um, just start creating more of a, a pattern effect if you had unlimited amounts of everything in unlimited lengths, right? So that part I'm like really liking about this. I don't know how these like edges, like how I'm gonna feel about them at the end, but I mean, I am just gonna go with it. So it kind of is what it is and this is one of those challenges, I think, that will kind of push the boundaries of what it is, like what is your style? Because I think, like all things creative, sometimes we can get into these grooves, which is not a bad thing of doing kind of the same thing over and over. But then when we challenge ourselves with something like using only scraps and, um, you know, I'm also only using plain weave here. You know, what kind, what can we do to make those two things interesting? And I definitely think what I have going on here is interesting. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know, like, it's gonna be a bit of a weird shape because it's gonna be kind of long and skinny, but I mean, that's another challenge, right? Is to like, how can we make something that isn't my normal proportions look good? And I have a, I have a stained dowel, which I thought kind of went with these more um, greeny pinky tones. And I'm just, again, I'm just like looking at what I have next to me and just going for it. And I'm really liking this so far. It's a bit tedious. So that's one thing because I can't really use my regular tapestry needle because of how short these pieces are and because of how many they, there are as well because obviously if I tried to thread my needle for every one of these teeny tiny little pieces, that would get even more tedious, I think. So that's another element of challenge, I would say. And like I said, I am trying to like look at like what it is I have left here. How far am I going to get with the materials that I have? Like it's, it's not going to be super far. Um, but 
It's going to take us somewhere. about 45 minutes so let's give myself another 15 I don't know how far I'm gonna get in 15 minutes but we can try um, this is obviously a very shaggy little guy um, and I'm quite I'm quite liking it it's definitely different and like I said it would be hard to do this if you're trying to do it on purpose or harder anyway um, but I think it's just an interesting definitely an interesting way to use up some scraps so I'm just kind of trimming the sides a little bit because I figure one way to make it look a little bit more finished is if like this what is sticking out on the side is all about the same length so it's not like too insane. And I'm just gonna keep going. I will say, because I'm using shorter pieces, like it is a little bit more tedious for the actual weaving because I'm doing it all by hand instead of with a needle, which is definitely not my preferred way of weaving, but it is pretty cool to be able to make something that is completely out of scraps that you might otherwise just get rid of, hopefully not toss, but I mean, I know that some people just toss them and there are places where you can recycle textiles. They can be kind of hard to find, but it does exist. And, but this is kind of a cool way of using them too, because you're really, getting as much use out of the yarn that you bought as you possibly can. And I'm definitely a fan of that. However, you know, there is the caveat of it taking a little bit longer because it is a little bit more finicky. I'm definitely feeling like I'm running out of stuff um, and just kind of trying to make do with what I have. Some of these pieces are getting pretty short. In retrospect, it probably would have been a good idea in this type of weaving to use a, um, like a shed stick or a pickup stick because it would have made my life a little bit easier, but I'm so far into this now. Um, I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> now I feel like I'm getting to a point where, like I said, I'm starting to like, really run out of stuff and I can see that I messed up somewhere in here. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it be all messed up. And I feel like this one should be pink. Can you see, wow. <laughs> When I look at the top down camera, I can see the utter chaos that is my table. Okay. So I am getting pretty close um, because I wanna hang this directly from the loops. I feel like I need to go a little bit further. So I'm going to try to quickly finish this up. It definitely took longer than I thought it would. And I feel like 
I feel like that on almost every project I do, but especially on this one where um, we're using scraps, I'm trying to search for them, all the things. How do I want to finish this? I think I want to just do a little bit more. So I'm just finishing this off with a another twining stitch. Um, and I'm using this pink fluffy roving yarn since I used it throughout the piece I just wanted to finish it off with something that was seen in the actual piece and not the same yarn I was using before which is just like a very basic off-white yarn because I wasn't really using that um, this turned out much different than I kind of anticipated because like I said I was gonna just do a a piece that had just raya knots throughout the whole thing, which definitely could have worked and does work. But I also feel like I clearly was a little bit more limited on the colors I wanted to use than I even thought. So if I had done that, I definitely wouldn't have had enough to do what I've done here. And at the end here, This yarn, this particular piece, let's clean up a bit here. I might tuck right back in to the back just because I, I don't want this very top stitch to come out at all. So I'm gonna tuck that in. Okay, let's talk about the back for a second. Um, I actually really like the back. And so I could have gone with a strategy of actually, um, I'm gonna tuck this back in to the front since that's where it was kind of like intended on being. So I could have done the reverse. I could have left all these ends in the back, but then I would have felt like the back was like really messy, but I kind of like what's going on here. I have a couple more ends to tuck in. So the front, while we're still, while it is still on the loom, I just kind of want to do my, any trimming I feel like needs to happen. While it's under tension, it's just going to be a little bit easier. These tiny little flex, I am just going to probably toss or save in a different bin because I literally can't use those. They are much too short. So now I'm just gonna go across and just get rid of any super long pieces because I don't think that looks as good um, than if it's like a little bit more even. Kind of like a, a tufted piece, but this tufting is just like really random. And now I'm kind of cleaning up the bottom a bit. And I'm just going in almost like a haircut, basically, where I don't want like all my fringe yarns to be the same length. So I'm kind of just like going in with my scissors at an angle so it looks a little bit more um, uneven, but like purposefully uneven. I'm also getting rid of any loops. Now what I'm going to do, I want to hang this directly from the loops and I'm hanging it on sort of this like warm, almost orangish dowel, which I think is going to look pretty good, but um, I need to get this side off and I'm just going to cut it right off. So now that I'm officially done weaving, I'm going to get rid of these scraps on my table. Okay, since I know I'm gonna get asked questions about this, I will show you this again. I've shown it in quite a few videos now, but I'm gonna do it again. 
I wanna hang these directly from the loops. So I'm going to open, I'm using two loops at a time. Opening those loops together, flipping them forward, and bringing the other two loops I've created together, and then putting them around my dowel like so. So then we kind of get that gathered look and we don't have to sew it onto the dowel. So again, stacking the loops, flipping them forward, and bringing those other two loops together and then around the dowel. So here's one issue I'm seeing. I feel like this is sitting too high above the weaving. Like I wish the loops were a little bit shorter. And because I used linen warp string, linen is quite stiff. So because this weaving is so lightweight, you can see that the warp string isn't wanting to hang um, super straight. Now I might be able to counteract that with some like steaming, but I'm trying to figure out like, is there a way to, you know, make this loop a little bit shorter? Could I, oh, that might work. Barely. That's gonna work. So just to make my life a little bit more complicated. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slip this back off. I'm gonna try to keep these loops I've created intact, like so. Okay, so I'm keeping those intact. Then what I'm gonna do, I pull this tight, so pull that all the way. Then I'm just gonna simply double this up. So I'm twisting it and doubling it. And it's a tight fit, but it does fit around the dowel. And that's going to kind of counteract that issue I feel like was happening. So it's really tight now, but I kind of like it. Okay, so this one came apart. So I'm going to have to do it again. Flipping it forward. Create two loops. And then again, doubling those loops up. It's a tight fit, but I like it better. <laughs> I'm having to redo the loops too because they're just kind of getting tangled. Okay, so in the process of this, I also came up with a different way to hang a weaving um, in case your loops are too long. So that's kind of exciting. And that's the thing about allowing yourself to sort of play around like I was today is that like it might bring something interesting out like is this my favorite weaving that I've made no um but I think it's interesting and I think it's cute and I think the fringe maybe isn't exactly well maybe it is I feel like the fringe is still to me looking too much like it's kind of on purpose all the same length. So I might just do what I'm doing now and go in and purposely cut some of it down a little bit so that it looks like it's more layers than it even actually is. Cause it's almost looking too even based on just like everything else that's happening in the piece. So I kind of want it just to be a little bit more random and organic looking, if you will. 
That's looking a little bit better to me just with, again, it looking a little bit more layered now. Again, kind of like a haircut. So I think, I think I'm gonna call this done. Again, it is very different. It's not gonna be for everyone. And that is honestly okay. The back, like I said, I actually really love the back. So I think maybe if I tried this again, and I didn't tuck in my warp strings yet, don't judge me. Um, but I think if I tried this again, I would try to make this the front. Um, and then still have, I like the edges being raw like this. And again, this is just a different look. And it's a shaggy scrap weaving. And I really hope you've enjoyed this weave with me. Maybe this has given you some ideas for how you could use your scraps. Some other ideas of ways you could use them is stuffing in a pillow, stuffing in anything really. Like if you're making a stuffed animal, you could use them in that. I'm also now though, my mind is spinning of how can I use those really, really short pieces? Like, is there a way that I can figure out how to use them? It's almost like yarn confetti. So like, is there a way to use them? So I'm gonna be thinking about that and maybe we'll do another one of these scrap editions of the weave with me. One last thing I wanted to talk about is our weaving merch. It's been a while since I've talked about it. Um, this shirt is super comfy and I'm gonna put a link in the description box below for it. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, um, stickers, tote bags, all kinds of different stuff. These would make great gifts. So make sure you tell your significant other who's buying for you a weaver about our Spruce and Linen merch. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.